I apologize if you hear a lot of wind or traffic or people. I decided to do a fun outdoor plant video for you because last summer or spring when I did my outdoor pots, a lot of you guys were asking on my Instagram and Facebook how I learned how to pot my plants and what kind of plants go well together to get the look of my outdoor pots. So I went today to my favorite local nursery and I got all my plants and I also went to Home Depot. I don't only shop at one spot, but I actually shop at many spots to find the type of plants and flowers that I want. Here's Kaya. So I thought this would be a fun video for you guys. If you agree, give this video a thumbs up. If you like plant videos, let me know. And yeah, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna kind of share just what I do. I've been doing my outdoor pots for years now. I started with my mom. She's the one who kind of taught me how to put them together and how to arrange them. And now that she's moved away, I've carried on the tradition of doing them with my babies. So I'm excited. So let's go ahead and get right into it. And uh, yeah. Starting off, if you've never done pots before, uh, you're gonna wanna get planters. I like to get just the plastic ones that have good drainage at the bottom. You can't see it, but all three of these have holes in the bottom, so there is good drainage. You're not gonna get a lot of soggy soil because sometimes you'll get downpours of rain or sometimes um, you'll accidentally overwater something with your hose. So you want planters with good drainage. As you can see, these things have helicopters in them. They have overgrowth from last year. There's tons of debris in here. I do not empty out my pots between seasons. What I like to do is I will either stick them on the side of my house or I will stick them in my shed or in the garage after the season has passed and then I will pull out all of this dead stuff the next season and then I will reuse my dirt. Dirt is expensive especially when you're doing pots every single year so try to recycle your dirt the best you can. Also if you lose some dirt because you're pulling at roots and things like that it's okay because you also have dirt in these pots that you will also be planting in them. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get all of these pots cleared out and then we will move on to the plants that I picked out and why and how to arrange them in your pots so that they look really really pretty. I like to wear gardening gloves but you don't have to but this way like if you have anything thorny or prickly they won't puncture your skin. Also keeps your hands and nails clean. Right here this one's already been pretty much cleared so I'm just gonna get all the dead stuff out from the top. Just kind of skim the top. As you can see, I got all three pots cleared out pretty nicely. My little helper over here helped clean up the surrounding area as we clean them up. You wanna make sure, like I said, just to get all the dead debris off the top, the roots that may be left over from last year. Again, your soil is gonna go down if you decide to recycle your pot dirt, but that's okay because you will be adding more dirt as you put your new plants in, so it'll kinda of keep rising. So if you're using a new pot, don't put the soil up to the very top because you want room to be able to water and you also want room to be able to put more soil in that's already attached to your plant. So my suggestion is to fill it up and also have like a six inch gap in between. And then if you're using recycled dirt, like I said, it's okay for it to be lower. It's actually better so that way it's not overflowing. I'm picking out flowers for my pots. I like to keep in mind how big my pot is. I like to fill mine pretty full with room for things to grow and to get large. Last year, I really shoved them full, but I love the look of them. I love the overgrowth look because they do grow pretty fast if you keep them in full sun and take care of them. But when I'm thinking about my pots after I've got the spacing down, I think about a few different things. I always pick some type of tall grass. In my case, I really like the Red Star Palms. They are beautiful. They are very hardy. They're drought resistant. They grow really nicely and add really good dimension to the pot. I always do a tall flower, which in this case, I have these right here. These are dahlias, which are gorgeous. I have them in an orange and pink color. Then I also have a medium flower, which would be these begonias right here. Begonias are beautiful. They bush out and they are just so pretty throughout the whole entire summer and spring season. They also bloom into the fall, at least they do here. Then I also have a coleus because coleus always have beautiful variations in them. So they bring out the colors in all different flowers 
flowers, which I love. They also are very hardy and they'll grow really full and thick as well and they're very affordable. Then I also make sure to have a short flowy flower and in my case I like these wave petunias because not only do they add a really good color but they flow down and outward. On top of that I like to have at least one type of flowing greenery and I like these right here because they have really nice variations in them and then I also like these because they kind of look like little bright neon green flowers. In regards to thinking about what looks good together I think all flower colors look good together. I don't really care. I don't really whenever I see a flower if I think it's pretty I grab it. I try not to have too much of one color but in this case I'm trying to be pretty uniformed with my three pots because they sit together and last year I really liked how they looked mirrored to each other. So yeah I got three of everything because they have three pots out here and then I have some extras for the backyard as well. This vining greenery be careful it travels really fast and also roots so if you have any cracks in your patio it will root there and you can actually bring this back year after year. This does come back. Um, I've had it come back numerous times so I have reused it before but uh, it didn't survive this last winter for some reason and then these are tomato plants so ignore those. Those are tomatoes and peppers I'm going to be planting in the backyard. When it comes to setting my plants and flowers out in their bins what I like to do is I like to with the containers kind of place them to see where I want to put them before I start digging into the dirt. For things like this that are kind of all in one container I like to just take them out to get your plant out you squeeze the bottom of these like so and then gently you pull from the bottom of the plant so you don't disrupt the flowers or the roots you just lift it out gently so what I like to do like I said is just place these where I want to see them and then I'll move them around depending on what they look like to figure out where I want to have them permanently and uh, then I'll start burying them. I always like to put the grass in the center or the back so that way it's coming out and it gives the pot some height. And then coleus, large ones especially, will grow really tall and bushy, so I like to keep those towards the back as well or on the sides. And then I like to have the flow be at the front of the container. So I like to have that green flowy stuff in the front and then I have the wave petunias on these sides and the begonia and the dahlia also on these sides. Like I said I like to keep the colors broken up a little bit so I do have the yellows not sitting super close to each other and then I have these pinks kind of across from each other so that way they can both draw attention to each other but not be like too pink or too yellow dominant on one side. But now that I have everything placed where I want it I'm going to take things out of the containers and then start burying them in the dirt. So let's go ahead and start with this pot right here. It looks very beautiful. I'm very happy with where all the colors are, where all the placement is. Again, I have some flowiness coming out on each side and then I have the tall in the center and in the back. So let's go ahead and start burying them where they need to be. I like to take the plants out and kind of set them outside of where I wanted them on the pot just so I don't get mixed up. I'm gonna do the red star palm, like I said, in the center. So again, just squeeze the bottom of the container and then pull it out. Save your containers. If you're like me and you like having house plants, these are perfect liners for when you're transplanting or splitting any of your house plants up. You can place these inside of really nice ceramic or pottery uh, so that way you have really good drainage holes. I keep all these and I reuse them. So if you're not like me and you don't reuse them, take them back to your local greenhouse. They'll really appreciate that because then they can reuse them. So any little bit helps the environment. After you get your plant out, you wanna just break up the roots a little bit just so that they have room to like grow out and breathe because they've been cooped up in there. And as you can see, look at all this new dirt with fertilizer. This is why I recycle my old dirt because you just don't need to keep putting new dirt in. <laughs> so I like to dig a little hole, set that in the center. Like I said, we're gonna do the center one first. That's the palm and there's that one. Move to the wave petunia. Things have already out of its container. I showed you that. Again, we're just gonna use our fingers at the bottom and break up the roots over your pot so the dirt and fertilizer goes in there and we're just going to plant that right next to the side, dig a hole and these will grow outward and over so don't worry you will have lots of fill in not too long a time. I love begonias guys, I absolutely love begonias, they are one of my favorite flowers. That beautiful roots, what's up bud? And again, we're just going to bury this nicely towards the side of the plant. And don't worry about getting dirt on your flowers or your plants because that's going to grow up and out 
and the rain and stuff like that's gonna wash it down so don't worry so much just be have fun and be creative break it over the container see look how much wonderful new dirt you got there you don't need to go and buy new dirt every single year guys recycle it dig a hole we're gonna put that right here beautiful beautiful I love it put it in So we have our dahlia, which again are very beautiful. They bloom for a long time, which is what I love about them. Bury it in. And don't worry about ruining any of your blooms. I mean, obviously you want it to look pretty, but at the same time, they're gonna grow back. Then we're gonna plant the last one. This is a Creeping Jenny, which again, these are like my favorite creeping like flow plants just because they grow into these beautiful, bushy, flowy plant down the sides. They're absolutely gorgeous. And again, they look like little green flowers. Super simple. Let's try to clean that up. there is one pot and if you're happy with this then let it be you can move stuff around it's not gonna hurt them um, definitely don't move stuff around after they've settled in and are rooted but as of right now you can still move stuff around if you get them in and you think oh that doesn't look right or I don't really like that but I really like this color combination and I really like where everything's placed I think they're all gonna do really well so I'm gonna leave this as is and move on to my next pot and I'm gonna do exactly the same thing as I just did all right there's a lawnmower behind me but this is what we have like I said, I wanted these two pots to mirror each other because those are going to sit opposite ends of each other. My little helper is watering them. After you're done planting and you're for sure set, like these are where I want my plants to be, then you want to just take your hose and give them a good water. But these just look beautiful. They turned out perfect. This one right here sits by itself behind the other two so it doesn't have to be exact. I am going to add these white green leaf begonias around just to fill it out a little bit more and to kind of make it look a little bit different from these two since these two mirror each other exactly. Again, I need to water them and then they'll be good. I'm super excited. What do you guys think? Do you like them? I like them. Not sure how much you guys can hear because it's a little bit windy outside, but I thought I'd give you a sneak peek of the vegetable garden and what I'm doing. I just got a few plants this year, just plants that I'll actually use and eat. So I'm gonna go ahead and plant that. I pretty much cleared this out last weekend or the weekend before that, this weekend before that. But obviously there's a few weeds that I need to pull over there. But yeah, I just thought I'd might as well show you guys how I plant my vegetables. Same concept, squeeze the bottom of the container first, pull at the base of the plant break apart the roots, put them in the dirt. There you go. We have our strawberries. I have a tomato berry, which I'm really excited about. They're like tomatoes, but they're super sweet. They're like a cross between tomatoes and strawberries. I don't know. Then I have a cherry tomato sweet 100. I'm gonna train it to grow up the trellis and I'm gonna Velcro it to that and the fence because it tends to get really bushy and tall and then fall over because of the weight of all the little cherry tomatoes. That's one of my favorite ones. I've gotten it for the last four years and been super successful about with it. And then I have sugar snap peas back here, which again, I'm gonna train to go up because they are vining plants. So anything you wanna train to go up a trellis, just kind of plant them angled towards where you want them. So as you can see, those snap peas are angled towards the fence so they'll grow up there naturally like the vines will just kind of grab onto them that's what cucumbers do as well but I'm not gonna grow cucumbers this year because I just don't want to beef master tomatoes um, peppers sweet peppers and then a red night but sweet red 
pepper as well there. I'm doing lots of red peppers because that's what the kids like to snack on. My suggestion would be to start with the tomato cages around them so then you don't have to mess with breaking any leaves or tomatoes off trying to get the tomato cage over them when they're full grown. Uh, this is how I like to do it. So make sure to keep your labels so you know what plant is what if you can't recognize them on your own. And yeah, that's my vegetable garden over here. We have our raspberry bushes coming back again. That's been a favorite of ours. We've had that for years now. Then as you can see, John tipped my herb bucket over when he was mowing the lawn. This dirt is usually in there. And these two buckets right here, I grow like basil, mint, cilantro, parsley, all sorts of things in there. And here is my lettuce garden. I usually plant all sorts of different lettuces for hamburgers and sandwiches and salads in these containers, but I'm not ready to do my herbs and my lettuces yet. So it's super important to water your plants after you plant them. It's supposed to rain later, but my luck will be that it doesn't rain. So I'm just gonna water them just in case. Guys, okay, so that's pretty much it. That's how I plant my pots and how I pick out the flowers and also my vegetable garden. Pretty simple. I just plop them in <laughs> like I showed you, water them, make sure they get full sun in that corner of our house, they get full sun. Also, I should mention, pay attention to your flower pots. Depending on where you put them, uh, you want to make sure to have the right flower in them. All of my flower pots in the front get six hours of sun or more, pretty much more. It's like full sun. And then the flower pots that I have in my backyard, which I will plant next weekend, those get probably not as much. So I try to err on the side of caution of what I plant in those. Uh, when it comes to like my actual flower beds and garden beds, I do not have annuals. I have perennials, which will come up every year. I really love daylilies, especially the variegated ones. I have a ton of those lined in the backyard. I'll do like a whole backyard tour if you guys want and also like a front tour of my hostas and my daylilies and my bumblebee flowers and stuff like that. If you guys want, let me know below. But all of those are still coming in and those are blooming. But I don't really like to mess around with like my garden beds too often. I like to have like, you know, mature flowers there that have been established. So those are pretty much all perennials. So that's why I really like doing pots every year because it gets my creativity out. It gets like my need for change out of my system. And again, it's just fun and it's something that I've always done every year with my mom. And now I do with Kaya when she's interested. As you saw, she kind of was in and out wanting to water and then wanting to dig a hole in the grass and just, you know. Sometimes I have friends who join me. Usually I do this Memorial Day weekend um, and I'll have like a girlfriend who will want to do some pots too and I'll have some extra flowers or an extra pot laying around and I'll be like, come over let's you know build a pot together but this year I was just out and about and I saw some flowers I really like so I decided to do it the weekend before Memorial Day so if you want to see me plant my herbs and my lettuce garden let me know or lettuce planters let me know just remember like my flower pots in the front that I just planted even though there's space in between those flowers it will take like literally maybe a week or two with full sun and water and those things are just gonna like fill that pot and be huge be patient your flowers will grow just like we all do with a little love and sun and water and all of that. And um, yeah, that's about that. So if you enjoyed these videos, let me know. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you wanna see more. Follow me on my social media if you wanna see updates of how my garden beds and stuff grow. I love posting pictures of my flowers and my vegetable gardens and what I produce from them throughout the summer. And that's about that. So I will talk to you guys all in my next video. Thank you for watching as always. And make sure to tag me and send me pictures of your plants that you've planted. I love seeing stuff like that. So yeah, bye guys.